Okay, are we live? Close the curtains. Just setting the camera up here. He's all gone. Why is a bit of glare there? Yeah, I'm gonna just see. Is that wrong light? Yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go like that. They can let me know if it's too bad. How you going? Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru. Welcome to me live tutorial today. I'm going to do a bit of a uh, morning scene with some hills and some different values and the sun coming through. And um, it's going to be a great exercise, I hope. Um, I just need to do a sound check, so I'll quickly get that sorted. And see how we go. Come on. My computer's going a bit slow, and I think it's because I moved my modem. So I just got to check this. The first time I'm using it since I used it. Now we got Susan Devasi in the room. Let me do a sound check here. There we go. Beautiful. All right, I can get on with it now. So I've got my monitor there. Let me grab this screen now. Okay. Get that out of the way. All right. So we're going to have the sun sort of coming over. There's some distant hills, so there's going to be some distance there, and hopefully this will work out all right. And if you're watching the replay, give me a comment below and tell me what you think of this video. If you have a question you want to ask, feel free to ask me a question, all right? Who we got there? And we've got a few people coming into the room, which is fantastic. There's about 30 there now. Roseanne, uh, Susan, Kristen, Tammy, and uh, Marilyn. Okay. And there's that one again, Pachafaya Pyra Porn from Thailand. Good morning from Thailand, okay? All right, I'm going to get started. So I'll leave you there for a minute, just so you can see what I'm up to in front of me palette here, uh, on me palette, in front of me canvas, on me easel. I always get the easel and the palette mixed up. Sometimes I'll say, okay, we'll go down to the, we'll go to the palette and I'm going to the easel and we go to the canvas and I'm on the palette. It's just one of those things that we do. All right, um, a lot of people do ask about this craft paint. It's just craft paint. I call it flow white because it flows out of the bottle and it's a flowing type of body paint. So I'm gonna do the sky. I'm gonna get enough on there just for the sky. I've pretty much mapped on here where my sky is going to be. And so I'm gonna get that ready. And I'm in a dry climatey area. Uh, it's not overly hot and it's not overly moist in the air, so I'm going to use about that much retarder to that. And what that's going to do, those two mixtures that I love to use, is... <coughs> bug coming on. Mix that together and it's going to make that paint stay wet longer, so when I put my skies on, I can blend them like an oil artist does. Because if I feel if I don't do that, I can't get that magic blending look happening the way the oil artists do it, all right? Who we got here? Roxanne, g'day, how you going? Ayana, uh, Patricia, Kim Anderson, and Diane Miller, Lo, Lanria, Zanria, sorry, and Lizetta. How you all doing? All right, so I'm just wondering, I might mask this hill area up because I don't need to blend that half and why I'm gonna mask it up. If I let all this retarded stuff get under there, it makes it difficult. Even when you've dried it, it gets a bit rubbery and it makes it a bit difficult to um, lay your paint on there. If, you, if you're not filming, it's fine, but because I'm filming, I need to, I'm restricted for time, all right? So we're gonna come and cascade around there like that and down. I've got a bit of a line there, where are you? There you go. Can everybody see okay? It's not too glary. Um, I'll get that done there like that. And then I'm gonna bring it over and make the magic happen. And can you use Flow Troll instead of Retarder. I've never used Flow Troll. Retarder slows the drying time down. Flow Troll, give it a go and practice it and see if it's gonna blend for you. I have never used it. So if you do have some, just try it what I'm doing here and do a little practice run and see if it's gonna work for you. I can't tell you if it will work or not because I have never used it, okay? So I'm not gonna try and act like I know everything. Um, now I'll bring you over here. 
Um, looks good. Thank you very much, Crystal Bus. Is it Bus or Bass? Bus with a double S. Crystal Bus is on the bus with us today. On the art bus. All right, let's hope I don't catch me wise. Let's push everything back under there like that. Now we have a bit of a shadow. I've got to get rid of that. So let me just see what happens here. If that's a bit better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. Okay, now down on the palette here. I've got that right craft paint. Now I like to try and get my um, live paintings done within an hour. So I'm going to try and get this done within an hour. I'll see how we go. So right, I've mixed all this up and I just use a beautiful flat brush from the hardware store. It's a nice two inch one and it don't muck around. It gets things right on your canvas. Now I've got some loose canvas here and it's, um, I'm going to crisscross this all the way into the two for the canvas. Now 90% of my paintings pretty well start the same way unless I'm painting something different. Okay, that <laughs> made a lot of sense, didn't it? So I'm just getting this on. I don't want it too thick, but I don't want it too thin where I've got to struggle to blend. All right, so I'm getting it on there. Now I want to stroke it left and right all the way across the canvas like that. And then I'm going to be a beautiful boy and I'm going to wipe my brush like a gentleman just to get all that build up. See all that build up I got on my brush? I'm just going to wipe that on there like that. Just get it all off. And then we're going to want, oh, I do need a pouncer. You can use a brush, but I'm going to use a pouncer later on throughout this video as well, just for the glare of the sun. Now come down here and we're going to have, I love Indian yellow. This is going to be a yellowy, browny sort of morning sky there with lots of love happening. So we're going to get some Indian yellow and um, some ochre, yellow ochre. It's, it's like a brown, sienna, dark yellow, something darker value, I like it. And I'll get some white on there as well. Titanium white out of the tube. I won't put the lids on tight because I'm probably gonna have to go back to them later. And the little tiddliest bit of um, burn umber. I find they make a good marriage, all these colours. Now I'm going to, um, I'm going to start with the Indian yellow. So we've got all that down there. And I want to paint my sky Indian yellow, all Indian yellow. Do we want it all Indian yellow? Yeah, pretty much. Just the top half anyway, at least, at least. So I did draw a line there where I'm going to have, because there's a distant mountain there. And um, it's going to be covered with a lot of glare. So I'll get all the top half of the sky, crisscross it in there, stay to the top of your canvas, okay? Then bring it down to that line. Doesn't matter if you go a bit over it. This is the sky, so it's going to have a lot of blending. Now you can see what all that white retarded paint has allowed this yellow to do. It's allowed it to blend it so marvellously. Um, now, don't wash nothing. Just pick up some of the... Um, Yellow ochre, and we're mixing with the yellow. Yes, mixing with the yellow. We're getting a different value, mixing it with the yellow there. Look at that. It's going to create those caramel colours. You've seen these colours happen before in my videos, and they look fantastic. Get it right on the brush there. Get it right in there. Don't muck around. Now this is the yellow, I mean not the yellow, the other half. Um, oh golly gee, before I do that, um, I want to create this bit in front of that. So now I want to grab my pouncer. I'm nearly forgetting everything, golly gee. Um, we want to grab some of this, I'm just going to dampen my pouncer and dab it on a rag. Now I've dampened that. I want to get this white paint, get it really wet so it's covering up the whole pouncer there, okay? And we want to create the glare of the beautiful sun. And I'm going to have my sun about here. So we're going to put that there like that. Now I need more paint. Sorry, just let me get more paint. And I'm 
going to you, ooh, we had a hard night. I'm going to use the flow paint because it's more wet and it'll transfer better. So I'm getting, there's my line there. I'm getting me, me flow paint. Now I'm going to dance it around and just let that glare, kind of like a football shape, a long egg shape coming out here. Dancing around, we're getting a glare there, a beautiful white glare. Now, I think I might wipe that a bit because it's getting a bit stipply. And I don't want me paint too stipply. I want it looking artistically. There we go. Look at that. Those stipples have died down a bit. Get a bit more of that paint. And we want to make that glare come out from there all the way across the valley. It's going to be a valley there, hills. The hills are alive with Julie Andrews there. Sort of that sort of theme, you know, the sound of music sort of theme, scene. This would be easy to do. You watch the whole video and watch what has been done and you, you'll honestly be able to do a little bit of practice and do it. It'd be fantastic. So I've virtually glared that out there, okay? Now I'm going to pick up a bit more just to get the intensity of the sun there. I want the intensity. There it is there. It's nice and white, real intense there, okay? How's that looking? I hope you can see that. You like yellow colours, Donna Clemens. Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? They're not bad at all. All right, we'll leave that there for now. Now I'm going to pick up that other colour I started getting. Let's hope this works, hey? And we're going to bring in the hills. What's that there? We've got something in a bit there as well. So I probably need to come about to there with that because I'm going to have another sweeping hill, but in the distance there as well. So this has got a lot of sweeping stuff. So let's start from here, from our horizon line, and then slowly bring it up to that yellow. And we're going to sit that other yellow back because this is like a distant hill. Okay, distant hill. So it's not focused. There we go. I hope that looks all right. Now what I want to do is grab a blending brush, something reasonable. Oh no, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, what do I want to do? I think I'll just add the littlest bit while that's like that. I'm going to try and get all this right. I've got the, um, keep forgetting. I've got the burnt umber there now. Now I want to mix that into there and get a control the darker value that I want. Get a bit more, control the darker value. There we go, not too dark. And we're going to make some sweeping, a little bit more I think. Get it in there. See I'm, what I'm doing, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm putting it on my brush so when I hit the canvas, I'm not going to have like, you know, there a big dark blob there. I'm controlling what's blended on here. See, I'm blending it here on my brush. So everything, that colour there is all there. There's no surprises, okay? Well, let's hope there's no surprises anyway. Now we want to come and we want to get a beautiful mountain coming down here, just with some, finish it off like that, okay? And a bit more sweeping down there like that. Pick up some more. Oh, Laura Collins, you are a sweetheart. Cyber hugs and kisses to you, darling, for that super chat donation. This does have super chat enabled, and a lot of avid fans of mine like to support what I do, and it is much appreciated. If you are watching the replay, there is a um, donate pale pay link there if you like to support. There. Now, I've, I've done that, and I want to blend that, but see see the way I've sweeped it that way? I want to blend it that way as well. Now the trick with my blending is you've got a beautiful dry brush, the brush you're happy to blend with, and we're going to blend that now. Let's get my hand out the way, and I'll try and get this blended into that yellow there, just sweeping, sweeping into there, participating or 
what's it called? Is that the word? I don't know. I like using big words, but I don't know what they mean a lot, but it just sounds great. See, and I want to participate that. Look at that beautiful sweeping out there. A bit more. Just participate it. Oh, the participation of it all. And then we're going to start here over this side. Nice. Control your blending. And then the same again. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a bit it's a bit heavy here, don't you think? Look at that. Let's try and um bullshit that up a bit so it looks really nice. Okay, and then we're going to get some of this coming down there. Okay, now we'll try and there we go. Distant. They're very distant. I do want I'm going to grab me filbert brush, my filbert. And I'm going to grab, this is just a bit of detail, watch this. I'm going to grab the, the burnt umber. I've dampened the brush a bit. Now that paint is very wet, very, very wet. I want to try and get some of this up there for some bullshit, just on the very edge. Now let's see if it's going to work because <sighs> I want some trees out here. It's got to be just a bit darker than what's there. Just something within the morning fog. Now it needs to be wetter. The paint needs to be wetter because I'm trying to create a wet on wet process now. So let's see how this goes. Five people left. What do I mean? Hang on a minute, let me get this done. Okay, coming along here. I'm just trying to add some real aspects down here. A bit up there. And we'll probably come along just here. There we go, that'll do. Just something like that. Okay, where's me? Where's me mouse? I'm just trying to find my mouse. There we go. My mouse went missing. Okay, I'm just reading. Is everything okay? Is everything going okay in the chat? All right. Now we've got that there. Now I want to get a bit more yellow. So come down here. We'll grab that yellow. I better clean this first so come around there I need to clean this brush it's a bit dark over there because that's stopping the glare from the um, the painting and I forgot me bin just let me grab my bin as well okay me beater bucket I need this brush again so I just want to quickly wash it And just give that brush a nice severe flogging. Okay, back over here. Okay. Now, I want to get a bit more white and yellow just down here. So what I can do is grab that pouncer again. So I want to get a bit of glare around here now just sort of scooting on a more yellowy, yellowy glare. So I'll pick up some of this white and the yellow there, but most of that white, I need more, because that's too yellow, I think. Let me just have a look at it there. All right, that might work. Get some more yellow and white together, just to get that glare in the valley down here coming along. So, Stamp it out, coming all the way here through the through the valley there. Stamp it out, and you can pick up your blending brush if you want, and blend this as well. Maybe a bit more white. Yeah. 
There we go. Now I'm going to pick up my blending brush and just soften the um, edge here into that so it doesn't look like an afterthought. So I'll get on here, I'll press it, and then just slowly manipulate it. Now see how long all this has stayed wet for? Beautiful, beautiful transition there, and over here as well. And then all this stipply bit of paint here, I'm gonna sit down as well with this brush just so it looks artistic and even within the painting. There we go, that's good enough. I think I can see a little bit of nonsense here. There we go. Now, that's ready to dry, so I've got to dry it. While I dry it, let's hope it's not so loud. I'll dry that there. I need to dry it just so I can add this other bit here, okay? Yeah, I'll get my blending brushes from the hardware store. A lot of people ask, what do I use? Just two inch, something sturdy, but very soft on the edge, on the tip. Now, I want this bit dry where I'm gonna put over it so nothing is mudding up. So that's why I'm drying this now. I mean, we could have put a bit of darker gray flavor in the corner there. I might do that off camera. There we go. So I want this reasonably dry. And before I do that, so as we don't get that ridge, I'll take this off, okay? Just so as we don't get that ridge of paint under our painting there, this just helps it as well. So get rid of that. There we go. Put that in the bin. Keep drying. We've got to put some trees here. Sorry about the noise, turn your volume down. I've got to dry it. If I don't dry it, I can't finish the painting. There we go. It's still a bit... I'll pull away from the microphone a bit. <laughs> Oh, that'll do it. That will do it. Now I'm gonna. I want to put the background mountain in before I put that tree in there. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll use that filbert brush. Where is it? I'm just washing all that burn number that was in it out, and I'll grab some. Um, oh, gonna put white in it. I will grab some um, green. So where are we? Let's find down here. Where's me green? I'm gonna use. Let's say. Um, I don't know. I might. Here I've got. Some some here. I got, uh, what's it called? Uh, chromium green. That'll do. It's nice and dull, distant looking green. So I'm going to put that on the palette down there like that. Okay, and it's um, a little bit loose. Oh, it's very loose, isn't it? All right, something like that. Maybe a little bit of white in there. Just something to grey it up a bit. Very pale. Oh, it's very, very watery paint, but that's what I want. And then we're going to come up from about here and get this. Where did that line go? It was somewhere there. I want a bit of hill here with some shrubbery. So we'll start because it's going to come green as it comes forward. So we're coming there. See why I dried it? This paint would be mixing with that now and be sort of giving you grief. So we'll come about there. Okay. Up there. And then we've got pockets of this that are lighter and darker. There's still that, this bit here had the um, white with the retarder there. So you'll see that happening there like that. I want to come down there. And then here I want to get a bit of upness air above the yellow there. There we go. Now I'm just going to pick up some of the um, burr number just to give a 
darker aspect of some of that. Just work out the flavour you want. I want it about a bit more in there. G'day Dave. This isn't grass either, it's, it's background shrubs. I need to dry that a little bit. So as the next procedure is going to work, how long have we been going for? 25 minutes. Just a little bit dry. Because I want some of this darker now coming. There we go. This adds bullshit to that stamp of trees there. And if I didn't dry it, it still feels like it needs a bit more drying. Just some darker aspects of it down the bottom. Because I've got to dry this now so I can do the rest of the painting. Just add little bits of um, darker details in that. How's that looking in the monitor? Mm. It's picking up the white still. It's not dried enough. See, I need to. I needed to have dried it a bit more. A little bit more dark down here. bit more dark. Yeah, now I'm going to have to dry it. It's, it's, that's what happens when you don't dry it. It won't act like you want it to, so I'll show you the difference. What happens. There we go, come on. Because that darker colour I'm trying to put on there, it's just not happening quite the way I want it because that green is just not dry enough. So that's why I'm giving some more drying time to it. Now we'll, now we'll try that. See, I want darker down here. Yeah, look at that, that's sitting on there now. Come on, there you go, you little baby. There you go. Bits there, little bits there, and darker there. All right. That wasn't too hard, was it? It was a bit hard for me, but uh, we got we got there. Now what I'm going to do, I've got to put the foreground here. It's like a hill going down and here. But before I do, there's some trees that are sticking up. So I want to put those there. Is this... That's reasonably dry, that's all good. So I want to get them there as well. So now I'm going to use the, um, the burnt umber, but I'm going to grey it up a bit. So come down here, and I want the... Let's bring that over here where I can reach it. And I'll grab some white. Okay, and I'll start mixing this colour to the value I want. Let's get it in the camera shot so you can see what I'm doing. And then... Let's get that to the value I want over here. Just very, mix it all up on the brush. It's Monday, no, Tuesday morning here. It's very crisp and cool outside. How's that going on? Maybe a little bit brighter. And, uh, but it's a nice day. My knee's feeling great. I'm standing the right way. You're a cow, maybe you can low. Uh, giraffes, eat them. How's everyone going in the chat there? Everything going okay? Hi there, Ian. And friends from Christine. How you going, Christine? Okay. Now, I've finally got that done. <laughs> I want some um, shrubbery here. So we might just put I can start from the bottom and I'm going to use a few different brushes. So I'm going to, I've got a flat as well. I want something just a bit different on the end of the road here. So there. Just like some kind of. That'll do. That will do. And we're going to get some, uh, pretty much there's that ground there. So all these trees are pretty much behind 
So I'm going to try and get something up there. There we go, in a, in a reasonable shape over there. And a, a bigger one, a bit of a shrub there, and a bigger one with umbrella type foliage coming here. All the way over here. And then I'll put some dark little trunks in here just to break it all up. And a little bit of highlight maybe here and there just to um, show where things are starting and finishing. Now this is coming over there. This will make sense once I get it down there. But it's just, this is just detail there in the background. You need it there. This one can actually come a bit bigger. All the way up there. Yeah, get it up there. Nice round tree shrub. I'm going to pick up some of the um, darker um, burnt umber, just the, the, the burnt umber that wasn't so mixed with the white, just to get some, there we go, some darker values in there, here and there. Just to break it up a bit so it doesn't look so flat. A little bit in there, not too much. And maybe down the bottom there. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my, where is it? I've got this, it's just a little liner brush. I need that to grab the um, burn umber on its own. Just wet down, so you can pull in some trunks within this stuff. Okay, see that? Uh, I've got no black on my palette. If I had some black, I'll see how I'll go. If I had some black, um, they'll probably look good blacked out as well. Which I think I will grab a little bit of black. Where's my black? Carbon black, there it is. Just so you can see what I'm doing here, because. I'd like the painting to be nice enough for someone to go, wow, I want to buy that. Because all my paintings are for sale, my YouTube tutorial paintings. Right, so I'm just getting some of that black and spitting it in with that burnt umber there. Just so it's not pure black. And the burnt umber is just not dark enough to sit on top of those dark colours that were put there. <sighs> Looking good, Jerry Pow. G'day, Jerry Pow. Now, yeah, so let's um, get some... Yeah, nice. If you can get these as um, wiggly and skinny as possible. That one's a bit watery. Um, they just make your paintings look real, real nice. Really, really nice. Get something up there nice and thin. If you have it too watery... It goes a bit weird. Now we've got bits of stuff here I want to branch down, get that paint nice and flowing. Just so we get some, there we go, nice dark branches there. Groups of branches. A bit more. I'll have a bit of a heavier trunk coming up here somewhere. And then you just lighten it up at the top. Well, not lighten it up, but, you know, you make it a bit thinner. Join all that up to everything. Get something out there coming up to that group there. Maybe another trunk there somewhere. It's a shrubbery kind of tree. What's that looking? Yeah, that's all right. Probably get something out here as well. And this one here, I'm just picking up some of that green now and I want to get some green aspects into that one. I can darken that one up. Alrighty, I'll wipe that brush. I like those little liner brushes. I like to wash them straight away and put them back because if you leave them with paint on them, it doesn't take long to bugger them up. 
Okay, we've got something there. That's going to sit back when we put this next bit on, okay? So I'm going to put my sweeping hill on, and I've got a road as well. So I think uh, we'll darken the rest of this up. So I'll just dry that area there where I'm going to do it. And I'll, I'll get a bit of, um, what do I want? I want a road, I want some tar. So I'm going to grab some... Um, Gray, if I can find the gray, there it is. There, I'm just grabbing stuff while I'll, so I'll get ready. And green, green, I want forest, forest green there. So, where's my forest green? All the way down here. And I want some, uh, put that brush in there. I want some cad yellow. Where's my cad yellow? So, over here, I'm grabbing some paints. Uh, where's my cad? Yeah, it is up there. Is that cad yellow? Or is this one? What's this one here, Mr. Ian? Uh, cadmium yellow light. There we go. We got it. Alrighty. So, back down to the palette. Oh, I'm pulling my cables everywhere. Does that sound still good? Let me just... I pulled the wire out, so I've got to... Just make sure that sound is good. So, back down to the pallet. Oh, there. Oh. Does that sound still good? Yep, that's fine. Gee, it's a bit of a delay in there. Now, um, black gesso. So, I'm going to blacken the bottom out in black gesso everywhere. So, I'm going to grab my flat two inch brush from the hardware and I'm just popping it in there. This is just gonna be black gesso. Why? There's a road about there, I'll mark it. And it's gonna come all the way to that point there and maybe just to there. Um, Cause I, I need a lot of depth out here, okay? Get that right over there, sinking that back, boom. Okay, and then come up here. Can you see that? I hope I get a bit closer there. All right. Let's make it happen. This doesn't have to be a... I've got it on there, and it's a very straight line, right? So you don't have to have it a straight line. Let's see if we can break it up a bit yeah just something a bit come on I'm getting scared you know how you get scared when you have done something and you're trying to do the next bit and you get a bit scared I'm just trying to break up that line from being so perfect not perfect but sharp I don't want it so sharp there we go it's a bit blurry now I'll just bomb all this back down the bottom here because this black gesso over those people who don't know this dries like a chalkboard matte black it's really good for blocking in bits like this I'll come along here and see if I was trying to brush all this on now and I had all that retarded stuff underneath it oh this will start pulling up and giving you grief and you'll be going what's going on here well, you'll know now because I told you. I didn't keep it from you. <laughs> all right, that was easy. Got that on there. Did you see all that? Yep. Can I ask everyone to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video? Ian is really close to 100,000 subscribers. Oh, yeah, that's right. I am too, uh, which is a great achievement. So would you... So would so would love for you to help him get there. Yeah, that's right. I'm almost 100,000 subscribers. Yeah, I forgot about Thanks for that, Mr. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Green. Thank you very much for that. Now, we've done that. You can see what's happening in the painting now, can't you? This has to be dry. So if you don't like the sound, turn your volume down for a minute until you see me move the... Um, hairdryer away because if this is wet what I'm about to do next 
just won't bloody happen. See now, while I muck around with this, that's just a bit of distance there, but detail distance, okay? We've got that glare coming from there and we've got the sun there. Uh, plus being the black gesso, that doesn't take that long to dry. What have we been going for? 40 minutes. Come on. Now, I've got to make a road. So I want to make a road there. Okay, is that getting dry? I've just noticed my leads banging against the pallet there, and it's probably making an annoying banging of it. I could just leave it like that, couldn't I? Now that's, yeah, oh God, my, my hands are bloody got wet paint all over them. See why I wear brushes, I mean gloves? Some people ask, why do you wear gloves then? Because I hate that snot on me fingers. I rather it on the gloves. And see the gloves? They look artistic, look at that. They're colorful, they're there, they're in the camera, they're, they're making something happen visually. Okay, yay. <laughs> bit of trivial nonsense there. All right, that's dry. That is dry. You only need to subscribe once, right? Yeah, you subscribe once, but every time you watch somebody you like, uh, Irene, you just hit the little thumbs up button down the bottom there. It just helps that creator out a bit. Now, I'll do the road first. So I'm going to get some grey, grey, grey. Check out the links in the description below if you're watching the replay. There's quite a few there. Uh, and like I said, all my paintings are available to purchase. Uh, we need a little bit of black. And um, there's my, my Facebook group page, my art group, which is called Annapolis Art Network. And what other colour do we want? Maybe a little bit of white. I'm just trying to get the road happening and a little bit of, um, we've got some, I'll better wet that just so it'll stay wet some of that yellow there. Now I'm going to do the road first, so I'm going to use a flat for that, a nice flat. I've got a bloody big one there, haven't I? So I'll first dot it in with the grey. Where's my paints? Over there. Uh, so we'll get the grey. I've just got grey out of the tube. It's just toning grey mid. So I'm going to come from about there. I better put my camera up so you can see what I'm doing, otherwise people will be grievously disappointed. And now my road's going to come about here, there, there and there. Where are you? Where are you? About there. Okay. Now I need to just get this a bit damp. Not too damp, otherwise it gives you grief. So many things you need to practice in painting and it's just like adding the right amount of water to the colour you're going to do and things like that. It's a big science experiment. Now this road, I want to try and get... Oh, I might have to... Yeah, see that big black ridge of paint there? Look at it, it's still wet. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is come from the dry side and go into that wet side. Boom, rub it away. I'll give it a bit of a dry. This is good showing you things that happen. Dry that there. Okay, now let's get that. Oh, now I've got to wash that brush because it's full of contaminated paint there. That's fine. So let's give some more of that and start again. Someone's in Brazil, wow. Now I got it because I want this over there like a dome shape, a slight dome shape. Now oh, there's still wet paint there, that black. Look at it. That's all right, I'll I'll work with it. Now we're going to just block in this road, grey, okay, get that down there where you want it in, down there.
down there. It's going in the distance over the hill. I'll wet the brush a bit more. You watch now, I've wet the brush. I've got some paint on there. It's going to get on there a bit better. So you're pretty much going to wet your road in with grey paint. I'm well, not wet it in, but brush it in with the grey paint because it's a tar road. It's a bitumen road, this one. Bit more water. This is what I like about editing videos because I can do a bit of this and then just go to the end bit instead of the different aspects of live paintings, you've got to sit through the whole procedure. Um, you know, a lot of you probably like it anyway, you don't mind it, but the person doing it always stresses out a bit and thinks, oh, it's going too long, oh, I do anyway. Now I'm going to dry this because I don't like that wet black bit up here still. See, it's still giving me grief. But anyway, I'm trying to get a certain type of feel there in that grey. So I'll give that a dry. Yes, white ceiling paint can be used in place of gesso if you don't have any gesso. White gesso. Thank you very much, Carla. It's fun painting, good stuff. Yeah, white gesso is pretty much ceiling paint anyway, for those that don't know. I needed to really have a cup of tea, sit down, have a cup of tea, bit of a muffin, you know, get back to your painting. But when you're painting live, you're pretty well, uh, what do you call it? under the pump trying to get it done because you know I don't want to go for too long I like to try and keep them within an hour but if they go over an hour that's okay it just means it's a more demanding painting now we'll get this over there look at that see what the the drying allowed me to do yay said Ray we're getting there now we want the road let's get this road a bit more get that wet. This first bit of grey is just the demanding bit. So long as your brush strokes are blended out, like see how you can see all my brush strokes up here, you can scrumble them. This is just a road. Oh, it's just so... I'll start scrumbling it in now. I've got the main underpainting of it there done. So I'm just using me flat. Now you can use a flat if you're going to do this painting or use something you feel is more appropriate that suits your habits. Every artist has different ways and habits, so a brush that works for one artist might not work for the other. Now we've got that there. Now what I want to do is just get out of there your brush. It's got to lean right on the way where I've got to put my hand, eh? There we go. Dry my hand now because I just got it in water. Uh, the edge of the road, I want a bit broken up. I don't want it like nice and neat line like that. So now, get this there. I want to break it up so it's scattered into that darkness there. Don't have it too transparent though. We'll see what happens. It's a different value to the actual road itself. So just scratch it in there now. We've got the main angle that we wanted. So now we're putting darkness it's going to allow the ground, the side ground, to sit on everything just like that. Look at that. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Okay. Got our greys there. Now, I want to get a little bit of black. So come down here and watch what I'm doing. Just a little bit of black now. And we'll use some of this grey just to... There we go. We're going to start getting our bitumen colour going. So we're going to scrape that this way. 
and let's get some bitumen colour going. Now we might even need, there we go, I'm going to scrumble it. So I've got my scrumbling brush here. This one, this will be better because it's bitumen. I'm going to use that. And oh, where'd the black go? The black colour, there it is. I want to get some, there we go. I can scrumble this and scrumble it across the road and get darker pivots and lighter pivots within it. Down here. We've got that stained middle section in the road where all the traffic drops its oil. If you're riding a motorbike, you always keep out of the oil slick on the road, eh? I'm forever, when I was riding my bike, constantly, you don't just watch where you're going like you do in the car, you've got to watch everybody else as well. It's a challenge every time you ride your motorbike just to survive out there. <laughs> Because if you assume someone's going to do the right thing in front of you and stop and wait for you to go before they want to cross over the road, sometimes they don't. They don't see you and bang, they pull out in front of you and if you're not aware of it, bang, you hit them. But anyway, a bit of motorbike trivial there. I'm sure a lot of bike riders know that. But those people that don't know, it's just something that bike riders put up with. So we've got that going up the highway there, sort of. Now, I want to sort of bring it down and around as well. So, you know, down and around here, just getting that darker value to the where I want it. Down and around here. Just, I'm using this brush because I can manipulate the, um, the value of it. But for some reason, there's a big, there we go, big blob happening there. Get that dark and dab it in some grey. There we go. And over here, we'll start over here to get some over here coming up and let it wear away off the brush so we can scrumble it in, change and darker values of that road. Now, I want to put some bright, some of this reflection of the sun on there, the morning sun on there as well, you know, because a lot of the times you've got dew or moist on the surfaces and the, the sun, the morning sun hits it and gives it that morning glare. How's that going there? I don't quite like what's happening there, but too bad. Now I'm going to wash that same scrumbling brush because I quite like it. And I want to get just a little bit of some glare happening there. So I'm going to grab some of um, this yellowy paint. Just before I do, I'm going to quickly dry that road area. Because we're also going to have a shadow coming over this road as well. And that's going to make up, give the, the painting some greatness as well. Let's see how that's going. That'll do. Not too bright, Ian. Now, I want some of it just about, pockets of it just probably here, the light hitting it. Okay. Jingle jangling up here because there's going to be a tree there and you i need to put this in there now where's that color there it is there probably the slightest bit there and all the way up here now see i'm getting a hard edge there with this brush it's starting to annoy me so what i'm going to do i'm just going to wipe the living buggery off it on there just to get rid of that and then i can there we go, we've got no goobly gloops on the edge. Now we can control that glare that we're trying to put on the road there. See? Probably put a little bit down here, just little pockets of light. The lights and darks help everything. There we go. This will make sense later. But you can see it's actually putting some light on the road. Now I want to grab the burnt umber. So I'm going to wash that brush because I need that for the um, the side of the road. Down here we've got the burnt umber that we had before. Bits of lights and darks in it. Just for the side of our road where leaves are gathering and that, so we're sort of coming along scattering up the road there. 
So we're going to do this all the way up the edge of the road, just like that, where we get some darkness. Use what brush is going to work for you. I like my little scrumbling brush, so I'm putting him to work today. Grab a bit more and I'll do the other side. I think I want it a bit darker umber than that. Here we go. We'll do this side as well. So we're pretty much coming from the black onto the grey there. So you could have... Um, I thought I would have to have gotten rid of that neat edge of the grey when I did it, but you could have just left it because this is breaking it up anyway. This is just making the gathering of leaves or whatever in there get a bit of another colour and add a bit of um, lighter values in there. You'll see this come together once I put the grass in there. There we go. I'll wash that. I want just the littlest bit of darkness in that road there, a bit more darker than what it is, so I'll try and get just a little bit more darker pockets in there. Okay, that'll do. I'll finish it off camera. So I've got to get all this um, side bit done now to finish it off. Bit of a fence and another tree. Yeah, this might go for an hour and a half by the looks of the time that I've got there. All right, there we go. Boom, bidi, boom, boom, boom. Now, what I want is... Um, some grass so i've got those greens that i used before i'm not that i used before that i grabbed it before which is the forest green and the cad yellow cad yellow we'll put over here somewhere okay and the where is it the burnt umber a bit more need a bit more burnt umber we'll put it just in that pile there and use what brush you think you can use for grass. Uh, what am I going to use? Golly, I've got a... Is that one all right? I'll use... I'm going to use this one here. So what I want to do first is grab me green. Now, I want to grab just a... bit of yellow, just to turn the lights on. So you can see what's happening there, okay? Get both sides of the brushes loaded up, or the brush loaded up. There we go. Come on. That'll do. Now work from your road. I want this grass kind of, uh, let's see how we're gonna go there, that'll do. So I'll get from here coming over the hill, so I'll start from there. And I'm just gonna jingle jangle and make bits of grass here. Can you see that? Where are we, yes. Pick up some more. Make sure that black's nice and dry. Now leave darks in there, okay? Leave darks in there. And now when you get to the road bit, let's go over here. That brown you put there, you wanna leave a bit and come to just that brown that you put on there. See here, don't come all the way to the road, okay? That's creating the dark depth. There, you'll see why. And we're just creating a field. Keep loading your brush and conditioning the paint on there the way you want, so when you come back up here, it's going onto your painting the way you want. And we're gonna, this is gonna have some nice highlights and some dead colors within it as well. So it'll all look all right. Get that all the way. Some dark bits all the way down there. So I'm going to do this pretty much. I'm going to have some darker, uh, what do you call it? Dead underwood colour bits in this as well. And it's going to start bringing this monkey home. But you need these under colours there for the painting to work. So we're getting that done there. Now we'll come on to the other side and quickly do that. 
that's just the underpainting of that side. It looks a bit honky dory at the moment, or a bit whatever, but now we're going to get this side. So let's start up here, up the top there, come down, just start making your, your field the way you want it, leaving pockets of dark, like I said. Shape it, shape it with your brush. That dark on the very top line here, cover that up. Don't leave it on the top, otherwise it'll look odd. And we're going to come all the way here to your road. I'll get this bit done first. Come to your road and leave all that dark shadow there on the edge of your road. Come just dribble over it a bit. Dribble over. And it's up to you how you shape your hills. Like I'm just kind of sweeping it down from the left of the painting and swooping in with some slight swells within it. I'm just constantly shaping the tip of my brush as well as I load it with paint so as it's doing the same stroke. And with this acrylic, you dry every coat of this, that way the next colour is going to stick on real beautiful and it's going to make you so happy with your work. You know, there's nothing worse than when you're doing something and it's just not making you happy. It's kind of depressing you, frustrating you. I might, with when once this video is finished, I might fine tune it with some darker bits along the edge of this road there. I'm feeling it needs some more darker bits there, but I want to get the painting done. I don't want you just sitting there forever and a day wondering when's this painting going to finish, but you can sort of see where it's going. We're going to have a beautiful tree popping into that lighter sun setting or sun morning dawning sun there, and that's going to be the hero of this painting, I feel. Okay, I've done that. Now I've got to give it a quick dry, just so as our next colour is going to stick on there, okay? So just let me quickly dry that. And I'm going to use the same brush because, um, righto. So, before we do the lighter colour, I'm washing that brush. Now watch this. This is why you need to watch the video first if you want to paint along. Um, grab your burnt umber, okay? Grab some burn umber and the cad yellow light. Mix that up till you get that dead colour. Because this is what makes your your trees and your those things look more of a realistic colour, is having that dead underwood colour in there. It really makes a difference. Now it's up to you how brown or yellowy you get this, but it's kind of making a brownie burnt green colour. Alright? There we go, that'll do. Now pockets of this, mainly not too far up in the distance, I want some dead bits, so I'm finding some just dead bits here and there, just scattered around in pockets like that. Maybe some here. Just like this. Try and keep that same flavour going, the, the brush strokes, the way you've put all that other colour on before. And then the same on the other side. Okay, so we'll probably... I'm going to have that tree about here somewhere, so I wouldn't mind some dead colours there. Bits up there. This, those people have never seen me do this. This is going to really make it pop when we put the highlights on there. The people that have seen it know what I'm doing here. Okay, bits along there maybe. Try not to make even patterns if you can help it. There we go, done. That's that, pockets of that. Pockets of that, okay. Now I wanna wash that brush, because I've gotta use the same brush again. And now we wanna make our yellow green. So I've gotta dry that. Okay. Just so our colour's going to stick on top of it. Now, 
now this is going to bring it home. We've got that um, forest green, cad yellow, simple cad yellow. Okay, and we're going to mix up our yellow green now. So let's get this the flavour we want. Now we want, when I'm doing this, I want to, I want this to be bright, and I'm going to have even another brighter value again. I think I put too much green there. Let's just mix on this side here. Yeah, I need a bit more yellows. So let's get a bit more yellow. There we go. There we go. Let's get all this mixed. Yeah, come on. It doesn't have to be purely mixed. It can be a bit marbly if you want. Now work out the brighter parts and um, I want to get some, let's make sure that's broken up a bit there. Get some brighter bits out here. Over on this ridge here. Because the sun's hitting the top of this hill. Come down and dribble, sink those dead underwood colours down within this. Now you see what I did there? I broke up the tip of it so it's a bit hairy. See? And this is adding the detail within your, your um, field, your ground, your grass, your lawn, the area. And this is where you control what's going on the road, what's not. Sink those dead underwood brown colours back, the dead grassy colours type of thing. <laughs> Get a bit more. Load your brush up, smash it over there, get it airy and hairy on the end. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. And... Don't cover all that brown stuff up. You want to leave some of it there. We'll quickly come to the other side. How's that looking? I'm sorry I can't address every question if any gone. Got to go chat later. No worries, Jennifer Thor. Um, smash it. <clears throat> Get this all going. All over that top ridge is really the light's really hitting it and it's going to fade on its way down. this done as quick as I can because when you paint I tell you what the time flies eh? it just gets up and boogies away from you especially when you're filming get that bit dribbling on the road where I want it just like that and we're going to highlight even more again just to make it pop in places. Okay, so I'm picking up more now of just the yellow, see here? What I'll do is I'll pull that over here now because I've got more than enough green on the brush to keep the darker value I want in there because I want this to really notice on there now a lot more Yellowy. Is that a word? Yellowy? No. Look at that. See, it's still not enough, so I've got to get more. I'll get yellow here. I've wiped my brush. Now I'm going to mix just this with what's on there. See, that's, that's it. That's the green yellow I want. Now, not everywhere with this colour, okay? Give it a quick little dry, quick little dry. Just so as we can get, yeah, some of this right up there now, right up there. Nice and yellow. Just tape it down there a bit, a bit more. 
little bit along the edge of the road there. Just coming in there. The light's hitting it. Just little bits here and there where the sun might be hitting the top areas of it. How's that looking in the monitor? And we'll come over this side here. Okay, look at that distance right over here. Pockets of it there. Just pockets of it. I don't like the way that's going on the road there like that. And then get some right on that hill coming over. coming over the top of the hill, cascading down in scallops. Not too much down here, but... You can get carried away doing this, hey, believe me. and bright there. All right, I can put that in there. Let me see that. That's looking, oh, there's a bit there. Wow, that looks ugly. I just had a look in the monitor. There's a bit right there I'm not happy with. I wonder who knows which part I'm going to go to. Stab it. Feather that out. How did that work? Mm, that'll do. That will do it. Okay, I'm going to grab my my trusty filbert and our. This is going to bring it home. Watch this. Uh, where are we? Black. Get some black over here. And some burnt umber. So I've got the burnt umber, where are we? Burnt umber and some black. Mix those two together. So it's a really, really dark. Get any white out of your brush there. You don't want it looking like uh, gray looking. Okay. Now we want that a little bit damp so it's going to transfer and we want to add the most sharpest beautifulest tree in the middle here that's going to bring this painting home so let's just come from about here and we'll get a we'll get a tree coming here this is um i'm Pretty much doing it before the um, the trunks go on. Bits of open bits in the middle there. Make sure there's no blobs on your brush either. And we'll get just a little bit up there as well, popping through the, the sun there. Oh yeah, look at that. Now we'll umbrella shape it down, come a bit darker into this area. Maybe just a little bit here, just a little bit. There we go. Little bit up there, how's that looking? Yeah, you can see what's happening. Pretty sure you can. Bring the bottom bits down, scooting down here a little bit. There we go, that's the tree. Now I'm gonna put the trunks in, and then if anything, we will highlight it appropriately where it might need highlighting. So I'm picking up that 
other brush here that I used before. See how it's clean? I cleaned it from before. Try not to leave them sitting. And I'm just dampening the paint, wiggling that into there. Now you don't want it too wet. Come in there and let's make that tree happen. This is a good way to do trees, this method. So we'll start from the ground, whereabouts about here. Let's go get it a bit fat and we'll bring one up here. Jingle, jangle, wiggle it. Wiggle it out nice and wet. If your paint's nice and wet, this will work, but not too wet. You've got to find that right consistency. So we're going to, I'll bring that tree down a bit just so I can come a bit wider. And then I want another one coming from this side. Twisting, see I'm twisting that brush as I go and getting up into that foliage there. Get rid of those pivot holes from the canvas tooth. And then we'll get another nice slim one, but wet as possible so it looks sharp. No, it's not wet. You've got to get it a bit wetter. And you get that nice, nice, um, yeah, look at that. And we'll get something skinnier up here, way up in there. Bring something out here. And then we'll bring something up here. Nice and skinny, wiggle them, look at that. Still need a bit more water. It's very, very hungry paint, eh? So when we highlight this, it's going to um, sink all this back. Now we need one coming up here, so to speak. There we go. Pop out in front of the sun there if you want. Just like that. And we'll get something out here holding this branch up. Holding all those leaves. And maybe something dead popping out of there as well, if you want. But make sure your paint's nice and wet. You're just pretty much joining all those foliage umbrellas down to the trunk. Just like that. Uh, that'll do. I can keep going like that for bloody hours. Okay, I'm going to wash that brush. I'm going to wipe it. I'm going to grab my scrumbling brush. Where did I put that? There it is there. I want to cast a shadow from that tree over on the road, okay? So I'm just going to grab... See, we need a shadow just coming over here. So I want to grab... What colour can I use? Pretty much... I uh, don't want the grey. I'll, I'll grab that colour that I used for the tree. Where is it? I'll grab that and I'll just whiten it up a bit. So I'll grab the white and some of that. There we go. Maybe a bit more. Maybe a bit more. A bit more white. Okay, let's get that all mixed properly so no blobs are going to surprise us. That'll do. Okay, now I want the, the, the shadow, let's, I didn't dry that tree, we want to get some kind of shadow, let's hope this is going to work, something just, is it going to clash with this road maybe, no it should be alright, just kind of put some kind of um, aspect of a shadow there. Hope my hand's not in the way. And we're going to darken this up just like that. How's it looking there? Is it ever looking all right, people? Let me look in the monitor. Oh, I don't like the way that shadow's coming. It's looking a bit dumber. I could have went that way a bit more. Oh well. Such is life. Yeah, I want to soften that into there. I'm going to 
wipe it and get some of the darker green. Just to get that bit there done. Yeah. Oh well, I'll, I'm going to have to fix that up off camera. Where's me um, little brush gone? I lost it. There it is. Picking up the that blacky brown colour that we use for the um, uh, what do you call it? The tree. Okay, so I'm just picking that up. Grab yourself a steady stick, something steady, and then we'll come. Let's go about there. Bang. You want them? I want to come pretty much here. So I'll put them there roughly how far I want them apart. So good dog, which paint was I using? Me, <laughs> I lost what paint I was using. And something about here. And I'm just putting in an old rickety fence. Something outbacky bushy rickety kind of fence there just to add another aspect or element to this painting get it down twist it get that nice and solid I don't want it breaking up like that try and get the perspective right too just, I want to come up above that horizon line there with this I'll put one more about here. Out there. There we go. Get him a little bit thicker because he's closer. I'll fix that one up. I'm a bit scared to look how long I've been going for here. Oh, 82 minutes. All right, these do need, I don't know, some kind of, um, if you want to put some kind of uh, wire within them. Make sure you put them the right distance from the bottom to the next one so it goes in perspective of the whole structure there nice and dark out here nice and dark and I might just let that one come right off the painting somehow and this one's fallen on the ground it's all broken and twisted and this one is just laying there all broken I'll just grab a bit of white it's just a simple bit of white in that and we'll get the light hitting it Just scrape the top and bring it down one side, it's good enough. Hey. Does it look like a fence? Yeah, I'm going to brighten that fence up. I will do it, but not right now. I'll, so if someone wants to buy it, it's a little bit more detail-y. Now I will put my signature on there, so I'll grab that lighter colour there and then we'll whack a frame on it and see how she looks, eh? So let me just get this signature paint all inked up, ready? And let's put, where are we? We'll go about here. Now you check out the links in the description below. All my tutorials, like I said, are available to buy 
they're for sale and they're done through PayPal and there's links down the bottom to show you what paintings are available and uh, if a painting is sold you can also purchase prints of my paintings and you can get several different prints for the one price message me on Facebook there's a link there for my Facebook if you want to know about how to buy a painting it's a very easy process all right Steve's little paw print there and my autograph now let's put a frame on this and see get everything out of the way let's just see how that looks should look all right in a frame being the landscape picture scape there we go that's not too shabby is it we've got a morning coming over the hill there morning scene is coffee and toast yeah coffee and toast there we go i will probably detail this up a bit but you can see where i was going with the painting okay our morning sun shining on the road all right and just remember you can do that it's a beautiful looking painting now i'm going to bring you over here just so i can finish up you get a view of the painting there it looks nice that can go there somewhere all right i hope you enjoyed that i loved painting this uh, who we got there susan um carla hisella good morning coffee scene oh good morning hisella all right so like i said give me a comment below give me the thumbs up check out the links in the description below and um, if you like what i'm doing you make sure you tell your friends but if you do not like what i'm doing you tell everybody okay all the best goodbye good luck and good on you now i've got to clean up but before i clean up i've got such a mess here i want to go and make myself a coffee i'm going to go behind the camera and say it's uru from the guru